I wouldn't be here right now. I wouldn't have a business. I wouldn't have a page. I wouldn't be who I am if I didn't hit rock bottom back then. I'm so grateful that that happened to me because it was a huge reality check. Getting myself out of it made me realize I am the only person that can change me. Give it a year, I bet they'll call you a genius. I'm so stoked to have you on the show. You already know that. I was telling you literally before we started taping, one thing that's so special about you is I really do believe that 2021 and the last five years has been an incredible shift in culture and the fact that women are able to keep their femininity and their softness. Like you have such a soft, sweet, beautiful personality. I just love that you haven't changed your own aura, your own vibe to match the idea of like a boss has to be a bitch you know (laughs) yeah no I appreciate that and I think that's the coolest thing going right now that you can with Instagram TikTok YouTube you can really be whoever you want you can Mm. start whatever you want you can launch a business you can have a podcast like it's really cool how many opportunities are out there now and there's really no one dictating who you have to be. I love that. Yeah. Right. I really want to go back to your childhood a little bit. I know that you traveled a lot. So just give me a little bit of the backstory because I feel like most people know you from your before and after picture, but your before picture wasn't your before, you know? Yes. Like, you're right. I want to know what created the before. Totally. And I think that's what, you're right, most people see me as, like, the transformation girl, which yeah. I didn't realize until recently, by the way. Yeah. Like, people were like, you're the girl in the transformation, and I had I had no idea that's what people knew me from. So, before the before, mm-hmm. I was born in the UK, born in London, and then we moved to Switzerland. From there, we moved back to the UK. In 2004, I was 10 years old, we moved to New York. You know, I definitely felt different. It's pretty interesting how different... British culture is to American culture like I I wouldn't have expected it but just even you know talking to the kids at school like certain words were different and I just felt embarrassed like I was like I sound crazy they're looking at me like I'm crazy and that's an interesting like way to grow up throughout high school I definitely felt like I didn't fit in I did have a core you know a group of friends but I wasn't confident like I hadn't found myself yet I didn't know what I was passionate about I didn't know you know, how to speak up, you know, things that you learn as you get older. And then my junior year of high school, my parents divorced. The four of us, my sister and I, my mom and dad have moved to the US together. So we were like on this adventure together. So them splitting up was kind of like, whoa, okay. I think that's where my mental health issues kind of came to surface. So at that point I had a lot of anger and sadness and I was just like ready to get out of that town. I ended up going to college in Philadelphia at Drexel University. Going to college, I was new to like the whole party scene. I hadn't done it in high school, so I went full out. So I was going out every night. I ended up being on social probation, academic probation, failing classes, but having a great time. I was really enjoying myself. I joined a sorority, but school was not a priority for me. It was just interesting trying to balance like this new social life I had with school and my mental health issues, adding drinking in for sure didn't help. Mm. So while I was having this awesome time, it slowly started to become very turbulent, I would say. The drinking was becoming, you know, it was getting in the way of like me improving as a person. Mm. And I didn't feel like I had any goals. Mm. I never had something that I really wanted to achieve. And I definitely had like mood swings and issues with depression and anxiety. So I was having issues with like self-harm and really scary experiences. So it was that that point where I went to get help. I went to a psychiatrist and... These people were talking about drugs and alcohol and partying. And they were saying that everybody who does that to an extreme, they're trying to run from something or to like mute the pain and yes it's really interesting because there's also part of it that isn't that like some people party to have fun and so it's interesting if there was like a tipping point that made it go from I'm just having a good time and meeting friends to yeah like no I am hurting on the inside and yeah this is like drowning that out I agree with you it was definitely a point where I was like this is interesting. I'm not happy unless I'm at every party and I'm always drunker than I should be. And it was definitely also an issue with being alone. 
I mm. hated being alone and now I love being alone. Around then was when I ended up getting my diagnosis of borderline personality disorder, which a lot of people I think still don't really know about, but it's being spoken about more, which is great. And I love speaking about it because I think it helps mm -hmm. so many people, you know, figure out if they have it, if a loved one has it, um, it can be misdiagnosed a lot. So right around that time in college was when I really hit like rock bottom. I was about to graduate. I was on a number of medications for my diagnosis and failing every class. Wow. I had to drop out of school, move home with my dad, no degree, no job. And it kind of like just hit me that I didn't know what, who I was or what I was doing with my life. And that's where the fitness journey began. When we talk about like how you got to the before picture, which I feel like everybody can relate to in some way in their life, like yeah. even if it's not fitness, they can relate to that feeling of rock bottom. I am curious, like, was it the anxiety and stress? Was it literally like the calories and the insulin spikes of drinking? Was that the cause of the weight gain? Like, did you even see the weight gain happening? Because I think sometimes we can't even see it. Yeah, it it took me a while to realize. I think because I'd never really struggled with my weight before, mm -hmm. but I was in this place where the medication I was on was numbing the pain, but it was also numbing my sense of reality. I was completely like unaware of what I was doing to my body and my life. Mm -hmm. So I was eating things that would make me feel horrible. Like, yeah. so I think it was just like emotional eating, the drinking, the lack of grip on reality, yeah. every everything kind of combined into one and, and also just feeling like lost. Yeah. And it just all coming to a point where I didn't recognize myself. When I look at that picture, for me, it's less about how my body looks and more like I know where I was at in that photo and it was mm. not a good place. You know what I mean? Yeah. Wow. It's so inspirational. I think that I actually went to the Soul Cycle class years ago, and I didn't know how hard to push myself because I didn't want to pass out, which is such a ridiculous fear to have. When no, you're as a beginner, you're not sure, right? You're yeah. not sure. And I remember the teacher. The teacher said, "If you're wondering how hard you should push yourself, push yourself to the max because that's actually what builds the strength, and the strength is why you came here. Like you showed up." literally and figuratively to see what you were made of to see how hard you can push yourself there's something really beautiful about struggle in that yes. it's such an opportunity and perhaps I don't know but perhaps you might not become or have become who you are right now yeah without the struggle so actually like the struggle in a way is a gift that catapult you to be this woman like the strength was created through the the resistance i was gonna say the exact same thing i agree 100 percent. i wouldn't be here right now i wouldn't have a business i wouldn't have a page i wouldn't be yeah. who i am if i didn't hit rock bottom back then i'm so grateful that that happened to me because it was a huge reality check and also working myself out of it like the the struggle of getting into it and the struggle of getting the whole thing was a yeah. struggle yeah. so I learned so much about myself through that journey. Getting myself out of it made me realize I am the only person that can change me. Because I had people trying to get me healthy. I had people trying to convince me like to- Like friends and family, you mean? Yeah, you know, my dad, Greg at the time, he was into fitness always. Like he's been into bodybuilding for most of his life. So he was your boyfriend during the before picture? Yeah. Wow. He was and he um he would go to the gym every day wow. and cook his food and I was like, I don't know what he's doing. This looks really Psycho. not enjoyable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like I don't want any part of this. So I had to figure it out on my own, you know. For me, like the biggest part of my journey was that I did it alone. And I think I needed to be alone. Do you think that you did it alone? Like what do you mean by alone? Most of my journey, my fitness journey, so I, I pretty much spent a year just focusing on personal growth, like weight loss, health, mental toughness, ev just everything. Yeah. Um, Greg was still at Drexel in Philly. So I was during oh. the week completely alone. Wow. Just, and it, it might sound crazy, but I struggled so badly being alone that going to the gym alone, the grocery store, all of it was hard for me. All of it felt new and like a challenge, but I just kept doing it. Greg would visit me on the weekend and he would actually weigh me and write down how much weight I lost because I didn't want to see the number 
Wow. I was so scared of like what, where I was at, you know? Wow. So he'd be like, you lost two pounds this week or you lost three pounds this week. What a boyfriend, now fiance. But I would love to know what the thought process was. Like, I think our self-talk is so critical when you are going from one thing to the next. It's easy to just have our eyes on these like micro goals throughout our day yep. but then when you're at night like alone or when you're waking up or when you're doing the stuff on your own we have these subconscious and conscious conversations with ourselves those are what create our habits which create our reality and I'm curious if all of that was going one way for you how did you successfully rewire your brain I used a lot of social media I used really? podcasts okay. like in a big way. I like really f tried to fill my head with positive, motivational content. I ended up going back to school to get my, finish my degree. I would drive to Philly and back like every week. The whole way I was listening to podcasts. I guess I just made sure I was surrounded by the right people, intaking the right things. I mean, there's so much out there now. So mm -hmm. much noise on social media. And totally. You could really listen to whatever you want and watch things that fill your head with bad thoughts too. So I just tried to really like watch what I was intaking. Yeah. And that helped. I love that. It's like the mental diet to yeah. keep the stuff clean that's I know, coming it's not, in. It sounds like I'm talking about food, but like yeah. it, it really did help. Yeah. So I want to see how that developed into like the after. You obviously healed your understanding of nutrition yeah. which helped you probably stopped drinking you understood your mental health better but did you think that you would achieve it like did you first believe that you were going to be the 2021 version of who you are now I would say during my fitness journey I I was shooting for the stars mm -hmm. the women I emulated were like bodybuilding pros and girls mm. with muscle and I really wanted like I wanted to look like I worked hard while doing that I learned how to work hard you know yeah. what I mean yeah I don't think I expected to have businesses I didn't expect to have a social media following I didn't expect to live in LA I think I just knew that the one thing I kept telling myself is if I work as hard as I possibly can good things will happen one thing that's amazing is the fitness space has got to be one of the most competitive, diluted markets. Yeah. And then there are people that are like doctors and yeah. this and that. And how did you grow your platform in, in such a competitive market? I think my number one thing with my page has always been about being relatable. Mm. And I think sharing my personal story, like the good, the bad, the ugly, everything mm -hmm. has just made me more personable. Yeah. I've never claimed to be a professional or the best fitness influencer out there. I don't know everything there is to know. I really take my followers along with me as if it's a diary. I've always treated my Instagram as a diary. Mm. I use my story as like a vlog every day, but I hope to keep keep them involved in everything I'm doing because I think that that's the most important thing. So I feel like nobody assumes that their first launch or and like that's such a huge number to have a launch get like one, I think it was 1.5, right? Million? Our greens. Yeah. We had a we had a big launch day. We sold twenty five thousand units of Crazy. greens in one day. It was the craziest day. Did you even have twenty five thousand units at the time? Barely. Okay. Barely. <laughs> so you knew we sold out. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So how does that happen? Because obviously you have to have great product, mm -hmm. but like I said, it's a really competitive market. Yeah. And for that to happen, I mean, that is so much work, right? Yeah. It was a lot of work, I think. Yeah, one great product. It has mm -hmm. to start with a good product. Um, I really believed in the product. I think taking your followers along on the production side, showing me using it, to every step makes them feel a part of the process and it makes them ultimately want to be involved in the launch and they want to buy the product. So I think this launch was like maybe our because the green sold out a few times. Mm -hmm. That's one of the struggles of being self-funded is keeping 
inventory and stock because it's so expensive. Yeah. So we were unable to afford the amount that our customers wanted, if that wow. makes sense. Yeah, so, for sure. It's funny. I was going to ask you about that, but then yeah. I thought, because I, I wanted to ask, there's so much risk in investing time, let alone money, into yeah. doing the next big step. Yeah. And how did you figure out like where that balance of risk would be to invest in 25,000 products is yeah. a lot it's a lot it's it's millions of dollars and it was yeah. scary like as I was just telling you our first product was a pdf that's where we started to build capital okay over time so everything we made we put back in and that's still how our business runs and it's scary like it's all of our money back then it was all of our money have you ever been afraid that you'd fail like how do you know that a photo and an instagram following is going to translate into sales you don't it, you don't i mean i remember when we first launched bloom we had been sampling pre-workouts the whole year prior and i was very nervous i was like this is scary territory because mm. the safe thing with the pdf is it it's just a pdf it lives forever it doesn't have much overhead you don't have to keep paying money to keep it in stock it just lives right? right so with the supplements it was suddenly like are they gonna move are they gonna like it are we gonna have to get more i want to talk a little bit about like your personal life and your thought process i want to know when you have ambition and you also have like a healthy sense of balance in your desires like like how do you find the balance and if you had to prioritize like how do you prioritize having a life and working yeah and being healthy yeah it's tough like it's definitely a balancing act like I can relate 100% we set rule I mean I set rules for myself so when you saw Greg and I on that bike Saturday date night is not an option like okay every Saturday we're doing a date every night. Saturday every Saturday give me a boyfriend that <laughs> <laughs> whoa it is no seriously it's it's so important to us wow and having rules and it doesn't sound fun but like kind of it just makes sure you make that happen yeah i'm so excited that you've been on this show okay i have some rapid fire questions so the first one what do you wish you could tell your younger self i'm sure you get that question a lot no i never have wow i never have i would tell myself to trust myself more have more confidence i was a really shy unsure kid and now i'm like why you know wow I love that. It's funny. I was just, I was at Whole Foods yesterday and this girl said like, what made you so courageous? And yeah. I realized that it's not even that I'm courageous. It's more that I trust myself to fail. Yes. Or I trust myself to be worthy even in my imperfections. And I think for me, a huge thing that I've struggled with in my life is like this idea of being perfect to yeah. be loved. I don't even think I realized it. I think it was a subconscious thing. Yeah. But the more you realize that like you're worthy and that you can trust yourself to have value yeah. regardless of what your what stage of life you're in, like that is power. And yeah. I think move. so many women struggle with that. Oh my gosh. Like, yeah. As kids, I feel like we're taught to be smaller and more quiet and more polite. And I looking back it just kind of makes me mad almost. Like I yeah. if I have a kid one day I want to make sure that they have all the confidence in the world and they're just like <laughs> taking it by storm because I was yeah. so shy yeah. and unsure of myself and I you know I wish I could go back but yeah I love that do you have like a top three top five nutrition tips Ooh, <laughs> yeah I do I could do Tell a top me. three okay top three number one do what works for you I think a lot of people think how do you know what works for you though on my journey, I actually started out eating just like Greg because he was kind of like my only example. So mm -hmm. I was having like, I remember my first meal, I made six eggs oh and a bowl of oatmeal and like blueberries. And wow. I was like, hmm, I don't feel great. <laughs> like this, this seems like a lot. And Greg was, is macho. For those of you guys who don't know, he looks like He's Hulk, 220 you know? pounds bodybuilder sure. and I was eating the same amount as him yeah so I was like okay I'll you know I'll tone it down but I was personally finding carbs making it difficult for me to get through my day so I tried a high fat low carb diet and that mm -hmm. kept me really stable in terms of my hunger levels my energy my mood I was like okay this must be what works for me I love that okay 
couple more questions. If you could achieve anything, what would it be? Would love to have a podcast. We would like to buy a house by the end of the year. That's another goal. Um, kids? Definitely want kids. Wow. Are you ready for them? Not right now. Okay. I know that I'm not because I had a dream that I had a kid and I was panicking. Me too. <laughs> Do you think that people get lucky or are they hardworking? I would say hard work is more important. I think that it's possible to come around at the right time. But I think if, you know, you have that one video that goes viral, or you get lucky one day, you have to keep it up, right? You have yeah. to you have to keep working on it and growing and putting yourself out there. I know for me, it was a lot of hard work. I'm sure you've had the same thing if someone tells you, oh, you're so lucky. It's, you know, kind of a backhanded compliment because yeah. re- behind the scenes, it's a lot of yeah, blood, it's like the tip of the iceberg. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I love it. Mari, you are amazing. I've said it before, but you are superwoman. Thank you for having me. I just love everything that you're creating, everything you stand for. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being on. It was so fun. Let's go do the dares. Oh my God. Dares. (laughs) So Mari gifted me with such good lyrics. Yeah, we're working together. She said, I I hope my booty grows. I feel like the thing that no one knows is I hope my booty grows. Other things I had written here were cake. I also wrote strawberries and cream. Ooh. Because that's my favorite flavor of cake. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna play in the time that it takes Me Layla to, to write a song. You got this. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Go! Hi, my name is Layla Perry, and you're watching Under the Covers, my show about the risks taken, the mountains climbed, and the victories behind some of the biggest game changers shaping culture and entertainment today. Suicide! <laughs> Jeremy Fox! Yes, Max Lugavere. <laughs> Mari Llewellyn. It's me! Glenn Coco. Yes. Drumroll! <laughs> Graham Bunn. <laughs> Scott Hansen. Greatest Woo. intro ever. <laughs> Give it a year, I bet they'll call you a genius.